Hi, um, this is Nita Acceptance, back on YouTube after however long, but here we talk about anything healing related, spirituality, and even trans and LGBT issues. So, um, this video is about my detransition story, or at least how I got to there, and my mental health and mental illness that related to all that and I just want to put this out there because I'm sure there are other people in this world that have chosen the path uh, to tra transition and then detrans and wanting to detransition but there's not a lot of stories for MTF to M which is male to female back to female to male so and when I was doing my research it wasn't a lot of videos there was more um male uh, female to male detransitioners where um lots of females transition but they want to detransition because it's just not what they thought it would be and didn't fix all their insecurities and then similar to my experience as well i wanted to create this video because the trans issue has gotten so out of hand so I'm also part of the problem I also thought being trans would fix all my issues and I'll get into that later but it doesn't it really doesn't um that's why I think having a strong gatekeeping method or a method in which there's a rigorous way to transition because it's not a light thing you should it's not a light decision to make at all like I went off of a whim honestly I was I thought I was feeling gender dysphoria for a year or two and from there I didn't even go out to therapy or anything like that to really solve and understand this um this mental health issue because gender dysphoria obviously is a mental illness um I know, I know people don't want to say that, but it really is. Like, I experienced it, but I don't think it was gender dysphoria. I think it was more gender dysmorphia. No, sorry. Um, body dysmorphia. That's what the word is. Not gender dysmorphia. Okay. Anyways. But I think it's really important to have a rigorous step. Um, like, other um, trans, transgender influencers, like Blair White, um... Buck Angel, like those type of people really advocate for gatekeeping and having strict methods in which people can receive um, the treatment to decide to become trans. So like getting hormones and have, talking to a therapist that isn't like a gender affirming therapist. Like I feel like those don't fully work in my mind just because of the wording of affirming. There's not even questioning if you're actually trans or not. Like there's a lot of even even when I was doing my research, like there were some detransitioners that were uh, male to female, back to male. Um, they were saying like the, a lot of these gender, uh, the gender affirming therapists that he went to, said that they didn't even question. They were like, oh yeah, you are trans because you were experiencing these things. Instead of like questioning and really diving deep. And I don't think hormones should be accessible. I think this is somehow related to big pharma and really cultivating money through a minority and profiting off of these minorities um, because a lot of these kids, like me, were... We were... I, I was stupid. But, like, I honor this experience. Like, no doubt. I'm not shaming myself. I really honor and find this experience a gift like to be to have gone through tra being trans and now to a gay male like this has been such a beautiful experience and never take this away from me but nevertheless i did fuck with my biology i did mess with my mental health my my whole physio physiological like biological experience and just did that without really even cons just just transition without even considering considering that so that being said let's kind of get into how this all started i do have my notes in this beautiful journal so when i do look down it's just because of that i last night i really just 
sat with my heart, with my soul, with my higher self and really asked like, what do I need to write? Because this has been coming through my dreams being like, Nita needs to talk about this, Nita needs, like it's almost been a fear to really come to the camera and really speak my mind. Because um, this is my purpose, speaking is my purpose here with my Saturn placement. Um, I don't need to get into that, but that is what I'm here for, um, to speak and using my voice because that's important um, for my growth. So how this started, um, I feel like a month, month and a half back, month and a half back because I've only been detransitioning for a month and a half now. But before that month and a half, maybe two months ago, I started really doing meditations before night where I would connect to my heart. Where I would just place my hands, like right before I, I went to bed, I would place my hand on my heart and just breathe and just asking to connect and really feeling into my heart because your heart is the greatest harmonizer. Your heart is where your soul lies. So in that sense, I was really trying to rediscover who I am. Like my manifestation desire was really to just be who I am, wanting to figure out who I am and getting to the bottom of it. And then the best way to do that is really to get to your heart. So that's what I was doing. And I was just doing that every night as much as I could and eventually my heart started to gravitate towards certain information like I was listening to Blair White and her podcast and really getting into detransition stories and getting into trans politics and whatnot and seeing how messed up our the queer community has become like it's just really crazy it's just seeing through her lens and I think it's really awesome that she exists and she's doing the best she can but like I think voices like me matter and need to be spoken of because it's just um I think like I don't want to discredit trans people at all like I think there are trans people in this world no doubt but my experiences kind of show that there needs to be more safety nets to show hey we really need more more steps in order for you to be trans because that's just that's just it's just you're really changing your biology like that's really intense and i just didn't consider that because i was 18 and naive so um what really helped me was this uh, influencer, his name is Shapeshifter. He was talking about his experiences and how he went through bottom surgery and that really kind of started the ball to roll where he was like, oh, I'm actually not trans. I actually made the wrong choice, yada, yada, yada. And like a lot of his stories was resonating, resonating with me how um, he, he was experiencing different uh, mental comorbidities, which are like different mental illnesses all happening at once. Um, and I was considering that as well. He was talking to me, he was not talking to me, he was talking to, he was talking in the video of like how he has OCD, how he has um, body, major body dysmorphia. And I can, I can say that as well. Like for me, when my mind is fo so fixated on something, like that's all I can think about. And I don't know if that's, um, I don't know if that's like a fully OCD thing, but like, I do feel like I have tendencies. I'm not fully OCD, but like when I'm fixated on something, I cannot not think about it. Like, like when my thought, when any thought goes, it keeps going, it keeps going for days and days and days and days and days. Um, until like, like I can, I've been doing my best to like breathe and come back to the present and you know, that takes time. And no shame in that. I'm just <laughs> getting better every single day. But I also experienced like major body dysmorphia. And I'll get into that to later. But your shape shifter was like really talking about his experience and really opened my eyes to what like what a person who isn't trans looks like or is like but has gone through this experience. And I was like hold on like it really started to turn the gears because I was like this feels 
a little close to home i'm wondering why and this kind of happened continued for like four days of just listening to like blair white and shapeshifter and other people but blair white was really really talking about how i think this is one of the things that was like oh wait really was when she was talking about like you can be gay and really not like your body hair. I was like, okay, that's one. And when I started kind of seeing through that perspective, it opened up a, like it flipped something in my head that was like, okay, if I could see through this perspective, what else is there that I was experiencing as dysphoria, gender dysphoria at that time that I wanted to, wanted to transition, you know? And through that, um, shapeshifter was also like he said that he was feeling like he was suppressing his inner child through transition and just ignoring what his inner child was trying to say and just eradicating and erasing that part of himself and I was like wait that's what I've been doing too and these thoughts of detransition have been going on for the last few years but it's just like small little thoughts like sprinkle I'm sure that was my intuition like coming through and be like when I would, when those thoughts of like detransition of like oh my god what if what would happen if I went off my hormones stuff like that when those thoughts would come up I would be like so triggered and I would not want to you know address those thoughts I would not want to really focus on them I would just be like oh my god stop 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 so that being said like that was what was happening um but I want to read you guys something that like really like that I okay so I was on the grass this one day after like really listening and trying to think about these things I was on the grass and like I was like what does my inner child like really really feel and want to say like what is the truth help, like universe help me see this clearly help me see my situation so clearly and I can feel this emotion right now. And it's like this inner child that's just been so shoved in the corner. Dr. Omni. Sorry if you can hear that sound. My dad is like <laughs> literally um, turning on the water to like sprinkle the grass. But um, like I could feel my inner child feel so suppressed and silenced. And through that, I was like, holy shit, I need a journalist. And. Okay, I'm gonna read it to you guys. I'm gonna read it. it. This is very vulnerable, and I don't do this just for anybody, but I just feel like people need to hear this, and it's important. So let me see. You ready? I said, there is this... Why did I write this? Oh, this is... Okay, this is July. Okay, I was like... Did I write this in April? No. Okay, anyways. There is this feeling like I killed a past version of myself. The inner child the that enjoyed presenting as a feminine boy. There was pure joy. I feel like I've cut myself off from a part of myself that has been needing a voice for so long. He's been suppressed of being himself to cover up the trauma with identifying as a woman. I know I will never be a woman. I enjoy presenting as feminine. My dysphoria experience comes from not wanting to not wanting facial hair, hating the sound of my voice for being too feminine, growing up growing up, but also didn't want it to change so I could sing high pitch songs. So I suppressed and pressed on my vocal cord and my and I'm vocal so that it wouldn't um, come out, you know. So I feel like the feminine has been so suppressed and traumatized within me. I remember that I had a crush on this boy in kindergarten. I just knew I liked him. There wasn't a need to dress up or be a woman. Sometimes I liked feminine things like lip gloss and dresses and heels. I felt so small and anxious that my Adam's apple was coming out. It was feeling like my whole life was slipping away. The first time I experienced pubic hair coming out, I felt like the, my world was ending. It sucked. I didn't want body hair. Growing up, I always surrounded myself around girls. There were times I tried on my sister or cousin's skirt to play a more feminine role, almost like drag or cross-dressing for fun. People made fun of or and bullied me for being my feminine self. I hated being that. I sounded like a girl and everyone would comment on that, especially boys. There was this one boy 
and another basketball player and my cousin had all said some mean shit to me in the science room. I cried. I hated myself for being so feminine. I hated being who I am or who I was. I was praised for my singing voice and I never wanted to lose it. It came so naturally to sing. I didn't care that my voice was oh, I didn't care that my voice was changing in a sense that I didn't want my voice to lower because I wanted to keep singing the high notes. Someone had put it in my head that it would it was cool that I could still still sing the high notes at the age that I was, implying it would change eventually. So this is all encompassing like grade school. Um, and just that inner child coming through. So I really didn't want my voice to change and hated and scared for the fact that my voice was being taken away. I pushed on my throat slash Adam's apple every day. I would sleep with my neck bent inward so that my Adam's apple would not stick out. I was so mortified. I somehow convinced myself that I could keep singing the high notes even though it hurt like crazy. It was never related to being a specific gender. My body hair, I just really hated. I didn't like the look and feel of it. Now I have a twisted version of self. I look in the mirror thinking I don't look woman enough. I never felt that way before transition. I really just hated the fact that there was so much body hair all over my body. I would for hours sit in front of a mirror and pluck my facial hair out. I hated it. I didn't like how it looked. I didn't like my voice either as I hit puberty because it was too femme. I wondered if I didn't think that I was trans, that I would love my voice for being feminine and see power in breaking down the patriarchy with bringing back the feminine through my masculine body with a feminine voice, which I thought was so powerful. At that point, I was crying. Um, I never have liked my voice because it sounded too feminine, but it, it has now transformed into I don't like my voice because it's not feminine enough. So that last part was like such a huge contrast from like before transition. Oh, I have a rush of energy. But before transition, I was like, oh my God, my voice is too feminine and I hate it. And as I transitioned or thought, the thought in my head that popped out, oh, maybe I am trans, popped in my head. I was like, oh my God. My voice isn't feminine enough. Like, I don't sound woman enough. So it's like these two really drastic polarities, like flipping, flipping. And I was just like, I really had to talk to my therapist about it because I was like, this just really feels like my tendency to people please. Like, I, that's, that is something I'm recovering from is people pleasing. Like, I just want to make sure that the video is still filming. Period. Period, period. Okay, I'm back. Um, just, I think it's just so crazy that our minds, not crazy, but it's so magical in a twisted way that our minds can go from one into the other, or at least my can. Um, so yeah, let me see. Like, I think... I think this comes from like being such a people pleaser or have having been a people pleaser my whole life. I really wanted to be accepted and loved in society and I thought that conforming to what other people would seem more comfortable or more accepting of me would be was just like before transition I was like okay I gotta be quiet I should not speak up I should not be talking I should really just make myself so small that nobody sees me so that I won't get bullied I won't get hurt I won't nobody will like say anything bad but still that was coming from such a small traumatized place because like like every single day of my life when I was living in Okinawa like in grade school the I didn't have a voice I didn't speak up for myself I was so bullied every single day for being so feminine, people be like, oh, come on, oh, come on, oh, come on, you're so come on. Which means, like, um, kind of like the word, um, the F-A-G, double G-O-T, that word in Japanese, or, like, kind of like cross-dresser, kind of like that. And they would insult me every single day. Like, there was not a single day where nobody would use that as an insult towards me. So, that being said, like, I, I was sick of it, but, like, I just didn't know how to stand up for myself. I was so 
I just wanted people to like me and love me and if that meant people shitting on me and if I still stay quiet and not have confrontation then I would be like okay yeah totally like shit on me but I would still feel so shit about myself and like cry myself to sleep like once a week because it's so intense like I really didn't like who I was as a kid um but that really developed into as I grew older like really hating myself and then eventually hating my body I hated my lips when I came to America like like being a person of color in America as a like moving from one country to another like especially coming from an Asian culture where it's like Eastern culture where um it's like about all about like the other person and like caring about the other person to a place where it's more individualized where you care about yourself um and like really comparing yourself with the beauty standards here in America is just like so intense and um, one thing led to another and to the place where I really hated anything feminine about myself when things were not feminine enough I hated it facial hair light hair really hated it my voice being too feminine hated it and I thought that translated into being trans which it doesn't it doesn't maybe it does for some people it just doesn't did it for me like, even, like my earliest memory as a little kid I remember playing with this guy in California uh, I used to live in California but there was this boy um, like I was best friends with him and I remember having a crush on him like I don't care if he sees this video or whatever like this is just the truth of my experience like I really had a crush on him I thought he was so cute um, but it wasn't really anything like sexual or anything it was just like so pure where it's like oh my god this boy is so cute oh, I'm gonna kiss him like something like that where I just I love him you know and I think that as like a core memory as a little kid I think just shows how I am gay like I am a gay male that just loves feminine things I love putting on makeup like as you can see like I think through um I'll talk about it later like my growth and love for femininity but um what's next on the venue like I do have mental comorbidities or at least I see it like it's not necessarily diagnosed like don't self-diagnose yourself but like I definitely see like big I, before transition I was like really intensely experiencing body dysmorphia if I'm sitting in front of a mirror for three hours just plucking out my facial hair and like really degrading my leg hair or my body and being like oh my god disgusting every single day like throughout the day and that's like my own reality like that is really heavy and dark so that was my experience with body dysmorphia and I think OCD in a sense where like that's all I can think about that's all I can think about and I think body dysmorphia is a segment of OCD so those kind of go in hand hand in hand um um let's see transition came from unconscious okay so my therapist was also talking about like how when we are experiencing really traumatized or really hard emotions like we come from a place of unconscious which is uh, when we're in survival mode when we're like really like not in our bodies when we're like overthinking when we're anxious when we're depressed like those times we are very much in the unconscious state where sorry this is like such intense energy it's just like really flowing through um but like i made the decision through unconscious place where it was like oh my god if i don't do this i'm um i'm gonna die i'm gonna kill myself um kind of like that perspective and it wasn't really coming from a grounded place where i'm like okay how can i think about this rationally do i need a therapist do i need to meet with somebody to really talk about this like am i going off of a win no i was coming from a traumatized place going with that flow thinking that was the choice that was the only option and just going with it and not coming from a place of rationality which is where I'm like more of a conscious place of like rational thinking and considering the emotions too but like really thinking about it of like well how much value will this bring will I be happy through this am I doing this for myself for other people which I was doing it for other people I really wanted to be accepted in society and seen um like my purpose here is to really be outside of the box and make my freak freak flag fly but i didn't know that before now i do but um saturn and gemini hey um but like 
straight up and down, like I really was coming from an unconscious place and making that decision from that really scared, um, surviving mode. But now as I'm doing this exercise of really coming from a conscious place and breathing and really seeing this through clearly using my intuition, using my logical mind as well, like both of those and coming back into my heart and asking my soul, asking for guidance through all these combinations. I'm like, okay, this seems like coming from a place of irrational. Now let me come back to a place of conscious way of thinking and boom, this is what came out of it. I'm detransitioning. Done. This is not for everybody. Like, transition isn't for everybody, and also detransition isn't for everybody. Like, this is very much a self journey. Like, go to a therapist if you really need help. Like, please do. Like, that is something I recommend. Like, highly, highly, highly recommend. If you take anything out of this from this video, go to a therapist if you're even questioning because. Maybe they'll help you bounce off the ideas. Don't go to a gender affirming therapist. Please don't. Like, don't. Just go to a therapist and just kind of maybe try to see through their perspective and have them be like, hey, can you help me think through this rationally? Because I think I'm coming from an emotional place because I think I'm coming from like such a traumatized, scared place. Can you help me see this through a grounded place? Like, help, can you help me argue and be the devil's advocate in this so that I don't make the wrong choice? Something like that. Because I made the wrong choice. But also it wasn't wrong at the same point um let's see like don't do this because you're seeking out external validation don't do this because you want men to like you because you want to fall into a different dating pool because you want to have men attracted to you or you want um to feel safe around men or if you want to do this for other people don't do that don't do that i thought of getting boobs i i didn't get boobs thank god but i thought that I wanted booze because I wanted it, but like, in retrospect, I'm like, this was, I wanted booze because I wanted men to be attracted to me. I wanted to be more feminine so I could um, be accepted in society, but fuck no, I am my own category. Like, I will never ever fit into a box. I will never ever fit into a box. And I honor that, I honor that magic, okay? <sighs> like, it's such an intense, what is it, responsibility to have to just be yourself and have that as your purpose. Like, I honor that. Um, so, what I learned through this trans experience is that, like, it's time to honor my femininity. Honor what gets me so excited and creative. Like, I have felt so much ease through being feminine, through dressing with the clothes I want to dress, through putting on the makeup that I want, through buying the glasses that are pink, through literally organizing my, like this is my parents' place, so this is not actually like my own room, but like actually, like I moved into a new place last week and I'm like organizing it or like decorating it in a way that I want to and it's like really cute and feminine and I'm like, yes. Like I bought a mirror that is like lip shaped. Oh my god, sorry, I'm feeling ungrounded right now because I'm so excited and it's like there's just so much, like so much coming through. Um I'm gonna see if there's any other messages. Um okay, going back to what I learned, like femininity is my purpose. Like the earth needs the feminine back. Like we have gone through such a dark age of the patriarchy and Mother Earth is calling us back to our femininity, to ground us in our femininity. femininity. Oh my god, that word. And like, that, using through my voice, like my voice is so femme. <laughs> and I hated it, but it's like such magic and such beauty that I have. And just wearing makeup and just being unconventional and being um, a gay male, like, hey. And just having that as a purpose and I think being trans really gave me that strength that power and acceptance for myself to really be like hey I am feminine and this is beautiful like not to say like that femininity correlates to makeup or whatever because it can be coming from a sexist place but 
that's how I express my femininity. Femininity is through like creativity and through creating a makeup look, through creating an outfit, through creating a space that I feel comfortable in and where I can just surrender my nervous system to the divine. And that's what I'm working towards. Um, but like really accepting this femininity is what taught me through being trans and it's okay to love yourself. It's okay to go through dark times. And another thing that really set into play what that I wasn't trans was my mental health didn't shift. Yes, I've gotten so much better because I was like really becoming myself through transition. Like it really opened me up to becoming myself, feeling a little bit more secure in society, passing as a woman and thinking that was who I was. And that opened up a gate to really just express myself because I felt comfortable in my skin. But my depression and anxiety got worse in a way. I didn't really, I wasn't happy, but I was becoming more in tune with myself. And that's what helped me, honestly. Like, I think without transitioning, and this isn't for everyone, I, what I did was so unconventional and like really don't highly recommend, I don't highly recommend it. But like, I don't know if this was in my soul contract coming through here, I don't know. But, like, it helped me to really come back to myself and recognize, wow, being gay man is beautiful. Um, being myself is beautiful. Coming back to who I truly am and wanting to be who I am. Coming back to my purpose. All this is beautiful. And I need to come back to who I truly am. And being trans wasn't who I am. It wasn't. And... You know, I honor this experience. I don't shame any part of it. Like, if you are considering detransition and in the midst of, if you want to stay trans or if you want to go back to the original like sex that you were, like honor that space, that void, because it's not forever. Like, eventually you're gonna flow into the state of like really knowing who you are. Just like really honor and put this experience of this void on a pedestal. Like be like, thank you for this experience. Like thank you for showing me these shadows, the light of it, and this unknown. Like find beauty in the unknown of like, wow, like I really don't know who I am right now, but that's magical. Let me see where it goes because it's not forever. This isn't forever and I can never have this experience ever again. So like, how can I honor this? How can I sit with this and be so thankful? Honor that experience, please. That's what I did. And it literally helped me flow to this, to where I am. And also one more thing, I don't recommend just jumping off of hormones like immediately, cause I've been on it for three years and it just, my whole body was like, did a whole three, 180 after this because like, there were pain, there was pain in my genitals right after transition detransition like to going off of hormones immediately like if you have an endocrinologist talk to them like go off of it, go off of it little by little but like my body was like every time I saw every after I considered detransitioning and I saw the hormones like my body was like oh my god I don't even want to take it like my body just was like no just no so that was my experience that was my journey if that is for you like to it but it's just like also consider your body and honor your body but also like listen to your body and see what's best for it because it's always always important to consider body sovereignty listening to your body honoring your body and being grateful for your body sorry there's just i'm not sorry but like oh my god there's just so much energy just flowing through and i hope this reaches somebody because like my story is important, like detransition story is important. Like it's not being heard enough through our community. Like I feel like trans activists are like really not considering like detransition people because there's like 26,000 people that are detransitioning, probably even more every single day. So it's like, like this is an issue that we have to really address in our community. Our people are be like, our kids are being neutered in a way. Like. Like, 
You're like little cats. Like, it's just so really, I don't mean to laugh. It's just insane. It's just insane. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't need to get into that. But like, just even if you take one thing out of this, like question if this is okay to even like, um, sterilize kids. If it's okay to detransition or if it's even okay to be trans, like, just question yourself a little bit. Journal, like, literally say fuck everything for like 30 minutes or even less. To just journal whatever you've been thinking. Be honest with yourself and just really write and call on your soul. Call on your heart, like call on your higher self and be like, can you help me? Can you help me see this clearly? Help me write this. So I can really be the best version, authentic, most beautiful version of myself that I can be because I'm not, I may not be that version right now. Help me write. Let me see this clearly. So I hope that helps somebody. I am going to end this video. Have a beautiful, amazing day, night, evening, wherever you are. Just, just know that I love you. And if you ever need somebody to talk to, like, I will put my email down below or yeah and then we can chat like straight up and down like just contact me if you want to talk like i'm open to it just have a great awesome day like you are amazing you are the magic you are divine like just hone into your love and trust your soul your internal guidance system and your intuition and come back to your heart she's calling to you he's calling to you so just come back and just listen and trust the guidance you receive. Trust that your soul is with you. Trust that the universe supports you. Trust. All right. Have a great day.